Ja, morgen graad 11, graad 12, vandag doen ons dan bedrijf 3 toneel 2, ons gaan soos gewoonlik eerst lees en dan gaan ons al gaan verduidelik. Goed, so die lichte doof uit, die lichte kom op, ons is by Kaleel sy huisie, Lucas staan daar en Kaleel kom aangeloop met die klompplanke oor sy skouwer. Middag, ek soek iemand om my te leer roei, het jy geskuit? Nee, ek het gedink daarheen miskien. Kaleel lag, vergeet van daarheen, dis nie sommer net te skuit nie, dis die loodsboot, en waarom slaan John Ben ons al toe met een spaan dood? Is John Ben die man op die kop? Ja, hy het geseen jy was vanmorgen daar boe by hom. Hy laat glij die planke van sy skouwers af, en dan met achterdoog sê hy, ek het geseen jy het gesels? Nie juist nie, ek soek werk. Dan het jy by die verkeerde man loop vraan op die verkeerde dag daarby. As die Suid-Oost so opstaan soos nou, is hy vroegdag al beneek. Hy sê my gevat het as ek kon rooi. Ach, rechtig, en het jy seker gesê hy soek een rooier vir Kaleel September se spaan? Wie is Kaleel September? Kaleel sê dit soos een waarskewing en een uitdaging. Ek! Nou, hoekom sal hy iemand vir jou spaan soek? Gaan jy daar weg? Kaleel is dreigend. Ja, ek wacht net vir die rechte skip om te kom, dan sê ek weg, en hulle sien my nie weer nie. Wanneer verwacht jy die skip waarvan jy praat? Dit kan ander jaar wees, dit kan ander week wees, dit kan morgen wees. Die oomlik dat hy kom, klim ek op hom en dan kan jy my spaan vat en kan jy en John Ben kyk hoe ver jylle kom. Lukas baai, ek soek nie een ander manse werk nie, ek soek my eie werk. Loop soek dan werk daar achter op die dorp by tens in sy plek. Hy is hulle een wit vlag as hulle arbeiders soek, hulle sal jou vat. Vir wat sy werk, dat die nieuwe kaaise maak. Ek sien hulle begin al klip aanrui. Ek wil nie klippe dra nie, ek soek werk hier by die water en by die skuit. As ek na die kleren aan jou lijf kyk, lyk jy vir my soos een wat in die bos gekryp het. Ek kom met die bos, ja, maar ek is klaar met die bos. Ek sal vir min geld en koos en blij plek werk en ek sal hard werk. Ek is gewoond aan hard werk. Luister, geld het ek nie om jou te betaal nie, maar koos en blij plek het ek baie, as jy daar vir my wil kom werk. Wat sy werk? Oesters uithaal, visvang, vis skoonmaak en droog. Ek dog jy is een rooier, ek is een rooier ook maar ek sien die kans om te leef op wat John Ben ons betaal nie. Ek maak my eie ekstra soos ek wil. Ek sal vir jou werk as jy my leer roei. Bly weg van die water af, houtkapper. Jy het gewone bloed in jylle aarde. Een man moet sout bloed hef voor die water jou vat. Ek weet. Kaleel loop sy huis in en Lukas volg. Kan jy ordentelike bosboks druk stel? Ja, die skepe betaal goed vir touwkie sluis. Kan jy blauwboekies druk stel? Is jy dan blauwboekies ook? So paar, ja. Ek stel nie blauwboekies strikke nie. Kaleel vererg om. Jy het toch eers begin werk en dan wil jy al uitsoep wat jy wil doen. Ek stel nie blauwboekies strikke nie. Ek sal ander werk doen. Die Lord of the Isles, die kaptein, het my laas 6 shillings betaal vir die blauwboekie. Waar kom al die skepe vandaan? Partij kom ver, partij loop kus langs, van hawe tot hawe. Wat gebeur is al vandag en hierdie storm my skip wil weerkom? Nie eers een koolvreter sal ek vandag na by John Bain sy rooi vlag waag nie. Wat is een koolvreter? Stoomskip, sonder seile. Hy spoeg hatig syvaards, sonder vuilgoed. Jy het gesê jy wacht vir een skip. Ek het ja, ek wacht om al jare lang in. Jy sê hier kom so baie skepe aan. Is dit een sekere skip wat vir jy wacht? Jy sal nie verstaan nie, houtkapper. Jy weet van niks. Jy praat duister, Kaleel, maar miskien verstaan ek beter as wat jy dink. Lukas loop en die mis begin opkom oor die see. Nina kom opgehaardlif en sy het een blauw rok met blommetjes aan en een dik zwaar Charlie om haar skouwers. Lukas, ek het jou gesoek. Sy gooi haar arms om hom. Lukas sê dan op band. Haar lei was teen myne en ek het myne voel antwoord gee. Was ek van my verstand af? Hy stoot haar weg en sy vlegse aardvingers dier syne. Hy praat dan gewoon. Waar die duivel kom jy vandaan? Ek soek jou al daar lang, ek toch, ek het begin glo dat jy seker maar weg is. Die laaste wat ek van jou gehoor het was by Miss Weatherbury toe jy sommer net weer aangeloop het. Vir wat het jy dit gedoen? Maar jy het my gesê, ek moet na vir pa loop sê, jy kom jy weer terug nie. Jy het my dan gestuur. Ek het toe maar net een bykie langer in die bos geblei, dis al. Waar in die bos? By die oud plek. Sy los sy hand en draai weg. Dis nie meer soos eers nie, Lukas. Die mondvlijkje is vals geroos, die botels is vuil en van die toren ingeneem. 
Ek het hulle toe maar begrawe. Misschien gaan ek ook nie weer terug bos toe nie. Nina, hy kan sy oor nie van haar weg hou nie. Nina, jy kon nie meer as twee maanden in die bos geblei het nie. Waar was jy? Nog. Ek het op die dorp gewerk. En dan met een skuldig gelachje sê sy, by die winkel waar ek die slag die mondvleikje gesteel het, ek werk nie meer daar nie, ek het geloop. Daar kom te veel snaakse seemanne in, wat die plek vir hulle hande het nie. Jy moet terug aan huis toe. Ek is terug my, by Miss Weatherbury, maar nie as een bediende nie. Ek is nou haar companion. Lucas is verlig. Jy is veilig by Miss Weatherbury. Nina, bly daar. Nina, um, kyk om vast in die oor. Waar anders kan ek gaan? Ek weet nie. Ek weet nie, dit is nie recht dat daar nie vir jou plek is waar jy nie verlee hoef te wees nie. Maar daarom gevraag of jy slaapplek het. Die seeman daar by die kaie sê, jy woon daar en werk vir hom. Ja, ek kan seker die selfde vraag as jy, waar anders? Jy beter bid dat pa dit nie uitvind nie. Of hy uitvind of nie, ek gaan nie terug huis toe nie. Kom, ek sal saam met jou stap tot by Miss Weatherbury sê ek. Maar ek was op pad na jou toe, met die boodskap. Wat sy boodskap? Sy is so mooi. Daar het iemand uit die lange kloof na jou gesoek. Sy hom stipt op om te sien hoe dit hom tref. Ek het hom by Eistrou terug in die harde pad gekry. Wie? Hy sê sy naam is Laikie van Bas Petrus. Wat wou hy hee? Wat wou hy hee, Nina? Nina met een hoon lag heel maar mond. Hy het gesoek na Benjamin Komoetie wat eerst in die lange kloof gewoon het. Hy het gesê hy het om gestuur om vir Benjamin Komoetie te kom sê van sy broer wat dood is. Sy broer David. Lukas sê dan op band, David was dood, David was dood, dood. En dan echo dit verder en hy praat dan weer normaal. Ek, kan, ek gaan vir een paar dae lange kloof toe. Kom jy weer terug? Ja, wanneer? Ek sal seker so week wegblij. Wanneer gaan jy? Ek wil eers een vis vang om saam te neem. Jy sal moet gauw maak. Willem het kom hout aflaai. Hy sê pa sal eergister van jy huis al weg om my en jou te kom soek, eindelijk vir jou. Het jy vir Willem gesê waar ek is? Nee, ek het gesê ek dink jy sal met die skip weg. Miskien onthou die mense in die lange kloof jy nie eers nie. Dan sal hulle nie van David laat weet het nie. Miskien herken hulle jou nie eers meer nie, of jy hulle nie. Ek sal hulle ken. Miskien woon hulle nie eers meer op die selfde plek nie. Dan soek ek hulle. Waar? Tot ek hulle kry. Hoekom? Lukas kom starig oor en, hoekom vraag jy Nina? Hoekom vraag jy al die dinge Nina? Sommer, ek is bang jy kom daar aan en, dan sê sy verwijtend, jy wil nog altyd teruggegaan het Lukas, as ek jy nie destijds uitgebring het nadat ek jy die pad gewys het, nie sal jy eerder gegaan het. Hoekom het jy my die dag uitgebring? Ek weet nie, miskien is dit waarom ek nou haastig is dat jy moet wegkom voor pa jou kry. Ek loop nog voor het donker is. Pas op vir die olifante, vooral by Jim Reed se draai, net voor kom se bosse pad uitdraai. Het is een van hulle deurlope daarheen. Ek sal uitluister. En moet nie in die donker probeer om in die boom te kom nie. As hulle jou jaag, trek jou baikie uit en gooi neer en vlug wind af. Daar sal genoeg tyd wees om weg te kom, solank hulle jou baikie vertrap. Ek weet nie na, jy is daarom nie al een wat hulle nikke leer ken het nie. Ek weet meer van hulle gevaar as jy, Lukas. Ek was langer in die bos. Jy moet by Miss Weatherbury bly. Waar anders? Ek sal na jou verlang, Nina. Nina met gedoeie aanvaarding. Ek dink nie, jy kom weer terug nie, Lukas. Lukas is onrustig. Waarom sê jy so? Ek weet nie. Dis of jy al klaar weg is. Waarom gaan jy terug lange kloof toe? David was my broer, voordat ek geweet het, Willem en Christoffel is my broer. Hoe kon hy jou broer gewees het? Hy was brein. Hy was nog altyd my broer. Goed. Om ons verduidelik. Right, so. Um, the first part is really not so super important. It is more to do with um, how Lucas and Khalil September basically became friends. Okay? So Lucas was looking for someone to teach him how to row. He then met Khalil. Um, also important to note at this point up to here... Uh, Lucas that did not know that he was actually speaking to Khalil September uh, because they they didn't introduce each other uh, or themselves. 
Good. So Lucas is talking about learning to row. He needs a boat. Uh, Khalil says that he shouldn't even think about using the one down there that he was pointing to because it's not just any boat. It's the Lewitz boat. It's the boat that John then uses to guide the ships into the harbor. Okay. We see here that um, Lucas and John Ben was talking this morning and Khalil is a little bit suspicious of what they were talking about. We'll look at that in a little bit again. Um, and Lucas says that he was looking for a job. Khalil kind of thinks, oh, whatever, because um, he says it's the wrong man that you asked and at the wrong time there why. So John Ben generally is not a very happy or a very friendly man. He's a little bit grumpy. But on a day like today when the site worse, the southeasterly wind um, starts blowing like this, he is very upset early in the morning already. Lucas then says kind of the wrong thing because he says he would have taken me if I could row. Khalil then says, oh, and he's probably looking for a rower to take over Khalil September's oar. In other words, the space in the rowboat. Um, Lucas then asks who it is and Khalil says to him, it's me. Lucas doesn't really understand why anyone would be looking for a replacement for Khalil September and he asks him if he's going away. Khalil then explains to us that he's just waiting for the right ship to come and then he will be gone forever. He explains to us that he has waited for it for a long time already and that the moment he gets um, or the ship arrives, he is gone. Lucas then rather or tries to flatter him or tries to ease the situation by just saying, I'm not looking for someone else's job, I'm looking for my own job. Khalil um, suggests Tenzin's place. Um, where they usually have a white flag on if they are looking for laborers. The work that they're busy doing is they're busy building a guy. You can go and look in the English translations for what that is. I explained it there um, nicely. Lucas doesn't want to do that. He wants a job here by the water. Khalil can deduce from Lucas's clothes that he comes from the forest. And Lucas says, yes, but I'm done with the forest. Now it's klar met die bos. He then says he worked for very little money for food and for lodging. But Khalil says, I can't pay you because I don't have money, but you can work for me for food and lodging. Khalil wants, oh, Lucas wants to know what he do, is going to do. And Khalil explains to him in that line, taking out oysters, fishing and cleaning and all of those things. We can see that John Ben does not pay them very well because he says, I don't see my way open to just um, live of what John Ben pays us. So he makes any extras the way he would like to. Then um, Luca says, I will work for you if you teach me how to row. Now, in this case, um, we see some of the superstitions regarding the, uh, uh, the, the, the ocean dwellers or the sea dwellers, shall we say the sailors and so on, what they believed. So he says to um, Benjamin, you have normal blood in you. You have to have salt blood before the water takes you, which means they believe that if you do not grow up by the ocean or near the ocean or learn to row from a young age, then you will not be able um, to learn how to row, uh, to, to be able to sail because the ocean will take you. In other words, you will die on the sea. Um, Khalil then asks Lucas if he can say proper Bosbok strike. Bosbok is a bush bug, and we see why he wants to do that. He wants to make Toki's place, which is kind of like Biltong because the ships pay a a good amount of money for that. Then they talk about blowbookies stricken. Okay, now blowbookies, for those of you that don't know, is an extinct antelope. Um, it used to live in the forest environment and people hunted them to extinction because they were easy to catch and easy to shoot. Um, interestingly enough, if we look at what Lucas says here, he says, Axtal me blowbookies stricken. Now why would he be able or be willing to set a Bosbok strik, but not a Blaubokki strik. In that, again, we see some superstitions of the forest. In the forest, they believe that Blaubokkis, if you kill a Blaubokki, 
um, you are cursed. Eh? You bring bad luck upon yourself and your family. So the people in the forest did not want to set blow bookie, uh, um, kill blowbookies. Even though Lucas has said that he is done with the forest, we see that he still um, believes strongly what they believed. Okay? Lucas then asks again about where the ships come from and he asks about if a ship wants to get into the harbor. Now remember in Act 3, Scene 1, I explained to you that at Naisna you have the two high cliffs that the ships need to go through to get into the harbor. Okay, So he wants to know what's going to happen if a ship tries to get through in the storm. Uh, Khalil says not even a quill freighter would try and get past John Ben's red flag. The red flag indicates obviously not safe to come in. Um, Lucas doesn't know what a squirrel freighter is, so Khalil explains to him that is a steamship, those without sails. And by what he does, he spits towards the side and says they are summer rubbish. We see that he does not very much like these ships. Okay. Um, then Lucas talks to him again about the ship. Now, to understand what Khalil says here, saying, I've been waiting for him for years, and you don't understand anything, Hope Copper, you don't know nothing. We need to understand or we need to look at Khalil's character. Now, it's not really um, explained clearly in here. Uh, I'm assuming the writer assumed that you would have knowledge of the novel by the time that you went to watch the drama. But Khalil September um, is skew, so um, he, he has a disability with his eyes. And in those days, if a person was skew, they were labeled as having the evil eye, which means that no ship captain would ever take a Lil September on his ship because according to the, the sailors of the time, um, people with the evil eye would lead them astray. They believed one eye is looking at the devil and the other is looking at the horizon. So where would they be sailing to? And that is what Khalil September means, like you know nothing, you know nothing of the lore of the sea. Good. Then Lucas leaves and we see mist on the ocean. Okay. Obviously remember from Act 1, Scene 1, when the mist was coming up, it indicated something bad is going to happen. So in this case we assume the same thing is going to happen. Nina comes up and she greets Lucas and she gives him a hug. But when she gives him a hug, Lucas says something that no brother should ever say about his sister. And he says, her body was against mine and I felt mine give answer. Now, this basically just means that he realized that he has feelings for Nina. So he knows this isn't right, so he pushes her away. But she then uh, puts her hand in his. Lucas wants to know where she was, and she, sh she says that um, she was looking for him, and then he's like, but no, you were with, with, with Miss Weatherbury, and then you just went away again. And then Nina is kind of confused and says, but you then asked me to go to Dad and tell him you're not coming back. I just stayed in the forest a little longer. Now, Nina's words here says she was at the old place, in other words, the place where they had their little bottles and things. She leaves his, his hand and turns away and then says, it's not like it was anymore. Um, she says, the Montflaki, the harmonica, has rusted and all the bottles are dirty and have been taken in by insects or the insects are living in them. And then she gets to this part where she says, I buried them. This means that she is burying her life in the forest. She is symbolically giving up her life in the forest. She's starting a new life away from the forest. Okay, so this indicates a new um, stage in Nina's life. Throughout the scene, you see things like where Lucas says he cannot keep his eyes off of her, which strengthens the idea of the feelings that he has for her. Nina explains to him that she was working at a shop in town where she stole the harmonica, which tells us that Lucas did not give her the five shillings to buy the harmonica like we saw in Act One, Act 3, Scene 1. She says that she left there because of all the weird um, sailors who do not have a place for their hands or who become a little bit too handsy. Lucas wants her to go back home so that she will be safe there, 
but she says i am back with miss weatherbury but now i am a companion for those of you that don't know what a companion is um, old english people or old rich people basically in those days would um, hire someone like nina for example to sort of be their friend yeah? so if they would go to dinner parties they would have someone to go to or having a walk they will be able to walk with that person or something like that Lucas is relieved when he hears that because he knows she's safe there and he tells her to stay with her and Nina looks him dead in the eye and says where else can I go so we know from this that Nina knows that she has no place else to be um, the rest of this isn't that important um, up to here where Lucas says he will go with her back to Miss Weatherbury's house and she says but I was actually on my way here I brought you a message so he asks what the message is and again thinks oh she's so pretty and then she says someone from the longer clue came to look for you and he she's looking at him to see how he reacts to hearing that someone from the longer clue um, went to look for him and then the message came and she says it with a kind of a grin on her face as if this is very funny to her. Um, he, she, he, she says that he was looking for Benjamin Kumuti as if to say, who the hell is Benjamin Kumuti? There's no such thing. And then she tells him the bad news that his brother is dead, his brother David. Now, we said the mist on the scene um, indicates bad luck or something bad that's going to happen. So two bad things happen in this scene. The first bad thing that happened was Lucas realizing his feelings for Nina, which he knows is not going to work. And then secondly, the information that we get about David's death. Even though the writer doesn't expressly tell us what Benjamin feels, we can still see what he feels because he says, David was do it, David was do it. And then the duet echoes. So by the repetition of Darvita's duet and the, the echo of duet, um, we see that Lucas is shocked by the news. Okay? If we look at what Lucas says here, wat wou he, wat wou he, Nina, that also shows um, a sort of panic to him. Because obviously, message from the Langer Kloof, he would have suspect or we would suspect that he thought maybe rather Salung or maybe even something happened to Fila. Okay? Um, but when David, or when they say David is dead, it is a big shock to him because we didn't expect one of the children to be dead, we expected one of the parents to be dead. Ne? Lucas then says it's going to the longer cliff, and Nina keeps on asking, when, are, when will you be coming back? Uh, when are you leaving? Then she asks him over here, maybe the people in the longer cliff don't even remember you anymore, maybe you don't recognize them or you, they you, maybe they don't live in the same place anymore so all of these questions that they keep or that she keeps asking here gives us an indication that nina does not want benjamin or lucas rather to leave um, we don't understand why 110 percent yet but we will in the next section so lucas then asks her why are you asking all these questions nina and she says summer because i'm scared you're going to leave and then dot 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 now if we need to complete the dot 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 that could be something like i'm scared you go and you don't want to come back or you forget me or um, i will never see you again or anything like that and then um, as if to blame lucas she or she says you always wanted to go back even uh, and if it wasn't that time that i brought you out when i showed you the road um, you would have left brought you out meaning told on you and told dad where you were going then Lucas asks her, but why did you tell me or tell on me that day? And she says, I don't know. Maybe it is why I am in a hurry for you to get away before dad finds you. Now, if we look at what Nina says throughout this, um, th this part, the questions that she asks and all of those things, one can start to assume that she's asking these things because she might actually have feelings for Lucas as well. So there's a very strong possibility here that the feelings that Lucas has for Nina, Nina also has for Lucas. Um, and by saying that she already told on him that time because of the feeling that she had, we can assume that she's been having these feelings for quite some time, a lot longer, of course, than what Lucas 
is having these feelings for. Although it is just speculation, it is not fact, it seems to be the way. The rest of this part then is just the discussion of what is going to happen. Uh, Mina giving him advice, telling him to look out for the elephants and if there are elephants, what he needs to do. Um, Nina Lucas then tells her to stay with Miss Weatherbury and she again says, where else? There's no place else for me to go. And then he says, this is the only time that he really utters anything about his feelings. And obviously, um, it could be just brother to sister, but he says, I will miss you, Nina. And Nina with, it says, the gedoeia aanvaarding, like, you know, I don't really think you are going to miss me kind of feeling that she gets. But she says, I don't think you're coming back again, Lucas. And Lucas is uneasy asking her, but why do you say so? And she says, well, it's like you've already been, or like you're already gone. So we can see that she already picked up in just this one scene between the interactions between her and Lucas that Lucas is distant from her. And obviously Lucas is distancing himself from her because of his feelings. He doesn't want to um, cause any issues with his feelings. She then asks him um, why he's going back to the Lange Kloof. He explains that Luke Darwit was his brother and she again doesn't understand how someone of color can be his brother. She doesn't understand that there can still be that brotherly bond between two people that, um, despite which race they were. And here we see that Lucas never stopped loving his family because he says, Lucas has always been my brother. Okay. So this is Act two, Act 3, Scene 2. We will, in the next video, then explain Act 3, Scene 3.